Okay, I saw this sweet little antique garden truck over here, and I just thought it was the most adorable thing in the world. And so I wanted to build one, but not quite like this, because this is full of um, steamed hardwood that, that they've used, and I'm, I'm not quite up to that level yet, but I thought, well, I could do one of the more modern looking ones. All right, so I picked this style to do. It's got little feet that it sits on. It's got a bent wood handle, which is really fun to make. And it's got these marvelous compound angles, which is what you're seeing here. The board leans out, and it's also cut this way. So that's called a compound angle. And these compound angles will strike fear into many a carpentry enthusiast because they can be a little tricky. But I'm just going to walk you through it, and it's really fun. See, look, fun with your circular saw. If you don't have one of these, I'm telling you, you're in for such a fun ride. Look, they do all kinds of beveling things. They do all kinds of things you might not even know they did. All right, so to start out with, when you're trying to get this whole thing organized, you cut the boards to the approximate length that you want to use to make your little garden trug. I think the word trug is a combination of trundle and lug, because you're you're lugging something, but you're really not in a hurry. So that's the meaning of that word. So you set up your, your little boards that you cut out, and you say, OK, I'm going to make a basket. And I want it to lean out a little bit, like about that much. OK, so you need to, you need, oops. You need to know, OK, I want it to lean out that much. So first thing you do then is you cut that angle on this board. All right, and you just see how it looks. So you take your little board over. And you're going to need a protractor, which hopefully you still have as a relic of geometry class. And this is a really neat one that I got. So it's set at about 15 degrees, which is that approximate angle. So I just mark it like that. And then I'm going to clamp it down. That little saw that I have is my favorite saw in the world because it's very quiet. It's a trim saw. So <laughs> normally um, on construction sites, I used to use a big worm drive um, saw, a skill saw, I guess it was, and it had a cord on it, and it was heavy. These are light, and they're not terribly noisy. So you don't feel sort of afraid of them or freaked out by them. So I have to adjust this to, to absolute zero so that it's not cutting any angles on me. Because the only angle I want is the one that I've drawn. I'm going to put that there. And I'm going to freehand this. Better put the earphones on. I'm going to freehand this cut. So it just goes like this. easy. All right, now you can see that I did a slightly lousy job of it. The line isn't quite right. That's the problem with freehanding. So I want to show you a way around that. But for now, I just want to show you back at the old corral here. There's my 15 degree angle. So I come along, I put the side up to it. And I think, OK, look, it's, it's, it's looking good. Except that to, to lean this out, well, this doesn't work here, so I got to get that off too. So I realize, aha, I have to cut 15 degrees off every single board at each end, and then I'll have my basket. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I'll mark this baby up and all the rest of them, and then I should be a little closer, I think. But I could be wrong. I'm just filing off the little boo-boo I made, you know, several little boo-boos, really, with my freehanding efforts. So I've got that fairly flush. OK, so look, all my boards are now cut with that nice 15-degree angle on the corners. So I think, OK, I'm almost done. And I put them together. And I say, OK, I just have to nail this baby together now. And then I think, oh, well, now wait a minute. That should be flat, but it's not anymore because I just shifted the angle 15 degrees. And this should be flat, but it's not anymore. And the bottoms are rocking and rolling because they're not flat either because everything's changed in this reality because the boards are both leaning. So I think, OK, 15 degrees. All I have to do is cut 15 degrees off here and another 15 degrees off here all the way around the top. 
And then on the bottom, on the opposite side, I have to do 15 degrees off the bottom. So, in order not to get mixed up, it's a good idea to just take a pencil and scribble along the edge of the high side so that you know, okay, that's the edge that's coming off. Otherwise, you're, you know, you could end up with cutting the high side of this and the same thing on the other and it would be way wrong. So this is the high side here. And then on the bottom, it's the outside edge. All right, so basically what I want to end up with is a parallelogram. So this is going to be missing and this is going to be missing, right? Okay, so how do you do that? Well, you bring this baby over, you clamp it down, and you have to work with the clamps a bit when you're using a circular saw because the, this big um, motor apparatus tends to get in the way. So start with the clamp at one end of this board, and then you're going to have to stop partway through your cut and switch it around. So, uh, oh, and this is now where we get to work with the beveling thing. So I loosen the plate and move it down till it's exactly at 15 degrees with that little arrow and tighten it back up again. And see how the angle goes in like this? So this is going to be the part that I want to take off. So I've actually got this upside down. See, you have to keep thinking. So let's go with this. Once you get used to your circular saw, you're going to want to just sleep with it under your pillow, I promise you, because it's such a great tool. The only other thing that you want to add to this, when you buy your circular saw, it comes with this little doohickey, which you think, well, I'm not going to use that, but you are, because look, it's a fence, and it helps you keep the saw going in a straight direction so you don't have any freehanding problems. Okay, and it's got this nice little gauge, so what you want to do is adjust it so that the zero and this little cutting guide, all right? You want the zero lined up right on that because I don't want to take anything off this top corner of the board. I just want to take the, the bit off the bottom. So, Oop. let's see how this works. Okay, so now the, the boards are all beveled on every possible surface. So I bring them over and I can start to assemble it. So look, see how pretty they look now? To the naked eye, that looks pretty good, don't you think? The truth is if you do the actual math on it, look. If I put both of these corners on, you'll see it more clearly. Okay, wait. <laughs> There's a little problem. See how they want to sort of go pigeon-toed? That's because if you want to get all crazy about it, you could shave off another three and three-quarter degrees off this corner. Like, who's going to bother? Okay, I'm not. I'm going to use lots of glue in the joint so it forces it open a little bit. All right, and the three and three quarters is because it's 15 degrees and half of 15 degrees is seven and a half and then another half of that is three and three quarters. Who cares? All right, so I'm gonna glue this together and then I'm gonna nail it together with these beautiful little antique reproduction nails I found that are so sweet. Aren't they sweet? Okay, but they've got a pretty demented profile on them. So in order not to split the board, I have to drill for these little nails. I'm going to start by drilling a deep hole with a thin drill bit. So that's just going to be like sort of right about there. And in it goes. And then, because it's, hold on a second. <laughs> and then because it's so thick at the top, I'm going to use a slightly larger drill bit and ream just the top half inch of the hole. Like, and just sort of like this. Just the top half inch. Okay, now I can hammer the nail in and I'll do all the corners. And I actually should glue before I, I should glue, because remember I want to fill that nasty little gap. Nobody likes a nasty little gap. I'll just put a little glue in there. And then I'll bang this together. It's hard to clamp them because of course they're well, 
they're just an awkward angle, aren't they? Okay, there we go. All right, I'm, I'm back to work on my garden truck here. I've got the three corners screwed together, and um, I'm not quite so far along yet as I might be. And um, remember I was talking about how the angles don't quite work out. They don't want to quite be 90 degrees. See how this is folding in a little bit? So you kind of have to I either cut it right, <laughs> but why start now for me? Uh, so I just like to force the corners open a little bit. It opens this joint a little bit. It's three degrees, three and three quarter degrees. And then this is not quite right either. So if you were making something with thicker edges, you would really feel that right now. You'd feel the pinch of inaccuracy. So I'm just gonna um, actually ask my old math teacher to, to open a 900 number service for people attempting this project because she can explain the whole thing with the angles. And I can't. I don't care. But perhaps I've been very clear about that. So I'm just going to glue this together and, and put the final two nails in. And then I have to do a floor for this. Now, the floor is slanted on the sides too because the walls are slanted, aren't they? The first floor I made, I just measured, I turned it over, measured across the bottom, cut the floor, dropped the floor in, picked the thing up, and the floor was still sitting there because I forgot the angling issue. So. Just measure across. See, these boards are going to be three quarters of an inch thick. That's the, the size of the stock I'm using. So just measure across three quarters uh, of an inch up and get your dimensions, OK? And then you know that that's your, your top dimension. Then you have to cut that 15 degree angle all around the outside edges of your board with your circular saw. Same 15 degrees, nothing changes. Nothing changes except your self-esteem if you have a little problem, but that's okay. So I'll just keep going with this, then I'll drop my floor in and just glue it. You don't need to nail it because gravity will hold it in place if it's got those wedgy edges on them. Just finishing lubing up my floor edges with a little bit of glue here. And I'm going to drop the floorboard in. Also, if you're, the outside shape of your trug doesn't come out uh, quite right, you might have to give a little chiropractic tweak. I had to do that because the floor looked like it was in crooked. So see if you just go like that. And then you can just leave these sitting here. You want to check on the bottom to make sure that it's relatively flush. And then um, it's a good idea to just, weight them down a little bit so that they stay connected to the edges. I'll just put my, my twin drills in here. There, all right, so I'll just set this here, right here. Very good. Now, the next bit is cutting the handle. This is the coolest thing because all you do is you take your circular saw and you cut down the edge of a two by four a very, very thin strip, and then another very, very thin strip, and we're going to put them together. Um, now, that, this, this is really fun, but you have to know how thick it should be. It's pine, so this piece is about an eighth of an inch thick. It's never going to make the curve. It's never going to do it. It's going to break. I mean, see, oh, hear that? Oh, <laughs> yeah, you heard that. Okay, it's too, it's not, it's too brittle. It's not thin enough. If we cut it thin enough, it's gonna, it'll just bend into this lovely loop. And then you, you, but you need two of them for strength because one is gonna be too wobbly. So you just glue them together. Stay right there. I, uh, I almost made a desperate mistake. I almost put the handle on before I put these little feet in place. And uh, that, that's a real pain, because I did it on that one, and I was trying to put the feet on with the handle, and you couldn't turn it upside down. It was a real pain. So I'm being just so brilliant about it this time. Oops. The glue's not quite dry yet on the, on the floorboard walls, so there's a lot of flexibility here. OK, now I'm going to flip this over, hoping the glue keeps the, the, here. Just don't do that, OK? I'll go like this. Oh. OK, <laughs> this, I haven't figured out how to 
solve this little problem yet, but whatever. I'll just sort of eyeball it from, from this angle and, uh, oh, <laughs> I guess it probably would have been better to just put the handle on and then I would have had an excuse. Okay, so I've got the floor in, and I actually taped the dang legs on, um, and that seemed to work a little bit better, because it kept them in place for me while I, I nailed them. Now the next step is putting the handle on, now that the legs are here, and... <laughs> So far, so good. The next step, as I mentioned, is putting the handle on. So you've got your two thin strips, and you can sand the sides of the top and bottom of them now or later. The whole basket has to get sanded, so I'm going to leave it for later. So I'm going to start with a little glue, and um, I almost forgot to. See, you're going to get this effect. The bottom um, strip should be cut a little bit shorter than the top strip because by the time you stretched it over, it ends up being longer on the bottom. Y you'll, you'll see what I mean in a second. So I've, I've put a little glue there and I'll start it and clamp it. So I'll put it about sort of more or less in the center. <laughs> The accuracy level is slipping ever lower on this project. I think I'll just use a slightly larger clamp. Then I'm going to bend this over and lacquer it up with a whole bunch more glue. That's about right. So that's going to go like this. Come on, baby. Okay. So that's going to want us to, to live there. So now I have to coat the whole um, top of it with glue so that I can... Actually, I'm going to just, yeah, okay, good. I'm going to coat the whole top of this with glue and then put the other one on top of it. Wow. Like this. Okay, so now I have to release this clamp just for a second. Let's see, that wasn't very elegantly executed, but I'll put them together. <laughs> then why start now? Okay, and then folding along. Now you're going to want to clamp. See, it It wants to come loose. It wants to separate. So you have to clamp about 15 times all around the edge here or use, uh, I don't know, heavy-duty clothes pins or whatever you can get your hands on to make sure that the, the two strips are stuck together nicely. Okay. So all the way around, and then I'll clamp it on the other side. And when the glue has dried, I'm going to put um, some nice little short copper nails like this right in, right in there, just to hold it forever. <sighs> Look at my sweet little garden trug. Isn't that sweet? It's really stable, too. So it's got this spiffy handle on it, which is now the glue set up, and I put four little nails in to hold it. Well, it's already going to hold with the glue, but just for decoration. So compound angles, huh? Do they build character or what? All right, so you've got to try this at least once in your life, though, just for the, the sense of perspiration that it will give you. All right, now, just I want to show you. This is a, a loon basket, a little bit different style of a basket. This is made by Ross Bateman. Now, isn't that sweet? Look how creative that is. There's a loon, and then attached to the loon's bottom and chest are the slats that hold stuff in the basket. That's really pretty. It's also made from white pine, and uh, he's been a woodworker for about 20, 20 years now, so he's got some real uh, uh, creative impulses. And then just behind him, Alan Fish loves a rustic approach to woodworking. So he's got a rough sawn uh, basket there that you can put tools in and stuff like that. And his doesn't have compound angles, which is, uh, see, if, you, if you're a little scared of compound angles, you can go with the straight cuts. But that's very beautifully stained too, a nice dark color. Okay, so I'm going to paint this now with a bit of milk paint. And um, I think that's going to make it look totally cool. Then I'll, I'll sand it again just to make it look distressed and old. 
See now, once you've attempted compound angles and you're out on a date, you can, after the date, you can say, so um, did you want to come up and look at my compound angles? Because there's no guy can resist that. If you make something by winging it, then no matter how it comes out, you still get to brag. Yep, made it from scratch. Thought that one up myself, no help at all. And when onlookers are speechless, it's important to assume they're totally impressed. Mm -hmm.